To anyone who has had any exposure to him, Takaru Sagawa stands out as kickboxing's ultimate blood and guts warrior. Brutal toe-to-toe exchanges and vicious knockouts are typical hallmarks of his fights. The first question someone might have when watching Sagawa in action is how does he always find a way to win? After all, he has been intermittently ranked number one pound for pound in the world for years. Not to say that Sagawa doesn't set up his strikes, but he does have a habit of going toe to toe, playing with fire. It is very likely that Sagawa prevails in shootouts due to his incredible punching power. So this question becomes, how is Sagawa able to generate so much punching power? Thanks to both some new and old research, there are studies which may be able to elucidate this issue. The first bit of research I will get into here is research looking at evidence of a double peak in muscle activation when skilled martial artists are throwing strikes. What this describes is the ability of someone throwing a strike to contract the muscle at the start of the strike, relax the arm or leg as it accelerates towards the target, and then for the arm or leg to brace or stiffen on impact. A muscle that doesn't relax on acceleration towards the target may lack speed and a muscle that doesn't stiffen on impacts may lack effective mass. If you consider in physics, force equals mass times acceleration, both of these factors are important factors in the overall power of the punch. Researchers have noticed that when analyzed, even amongst boxers who have been training for years, there is a more favorable contract, relax, stiffen pattern that they have suggested creates more power. The concept of effective mass on impact has also been used to explain discrepancies in strike power amongst Kung Fu practitioners of equal speed and body weight. It is likely that this ability to strike with greater effective mass is something that Sagawa has developed through years of practice, as his motor skills center in the brain learn the optimal intramuscular coordination for max power. The second piece of research, which is arguably more well known, is some older research out of the Soviet Union. They assigned boxers to different levels based off experienced, with the most experienced being described as the master of sports, the next most experienced being class 1, and finally class 2 and 3. They noted that the most experienced boxers generated the most power from their legs, whilst the less experienced boxers generated more power from their arms. They classified boxers as either speedsters, players, or knockout artists. Sagawa would definitely have to come under the banner of a knockout artist. It's apparent from watching his fights that he is looking to plant his feet into the ground and rotate for maximal power. Whilst this is undoubtedly beneficial for his punching power, equally it appears counterproductive to his movement as he can appear flat-footed at times. From a strength and conditioning point of view, Taka has also been known to do high-velocity exercises, such as jump squats, which will undoubtedly have a more beneficial effect on measures of high velocity strength than slower, heavier squats. Beyond his punching technique, Takaru has an effective kicking game and actually started with karate as his first martial art. He often uses his lead leg roundhouse kick as a range finder or a distraction, although he sometimes uses it as a weapon, landing hard roundhouse kicks to the body. With his kicking style, he is also a fast head kicker. His karate influence is also apparent in his front snap kick. Takaru also possesses a vicious right knee to the body. The final question I have for the viewer is how do you see a hypothetical fight between Sagawa and Tenshin Nasukawa going? On the one hand, Takaru showed weaknesses against Yuta, losing the first round and having a very close second round. On the flip side, Nasukawa arguably showed weaknesses in his chin and boxing against Floyd Mayweather albeit that was against a much bigger opponent. One thing about Sagawa's intensely physical style is that usually fighters can only keep that style up for so long. If you look at Anawa, a fighter with a similarly intense physical style, he was a latecomer to Muay Thai who peaked becoming Muay Thai Fighter of the Year in 2003 and 2004. However, once he started to lose and his physicality dropped off, his form fell off a cliff. Personally, I think if they had fought any time in the last two years with both fighters fully motivated for a big fight, there is a very good chance Sagawa would lure Nasukawa into enough of a brawl to win by KO, especially if they had met in the later stages of a tournament or in a five-round fight. The longer the fight takes to happen, 
If it ever does happen, then the more I think it favors tension.